to uh, Cambodia and Vietnam. And I was just staggered by the speed of growth. I mean, if you look at the Middle East and you think it's kind of death and destruction, Asia is growth and prosperity at the moment. I went through five different airports on my trip during the course of a couple of weeks. And I landed back at Washington DC's Dulles Airport. Dulles was the only airport that felt like it was in a developing country. <laughs> the airport in Hanoi, the new international airport in Hanoi, was conceived five years ago. They raised the money, built the airport, got the permits, built a three-lane highway and a super bridge to get there as well in the space of five years. In that time, Congress would be debating the first drawing and probably not coming up with very much. The Chinese have a 40-year plan for investing in biomedical technology, and you know they will stick to it. Congress can't come up with a 40-day plan. A 40-minute plan would probably be a bit beyond them. And I was just staggered by how fast things are moving in Asia and how much energy there is in economic development. I have a friend, you know this far better than I do, uh, I have a friend who is a neuroscientist at Gallaudet University, and she's just uh, doing an attachment at the University of Hong Kong. And she said she, she's been called in to help set up a neuroimaging department. On her first visit there, she was taken around the building in the space and said, you know, what do you need? And she said, well, it would be great to have this and, of course, that, but this is terribly expensive and we need this equipment. She went back a month later and it was almost all ready to go. She just could not believe the amount of money and the speed with which things are being done. And she said the students at the University of Hong Kong are top rate. She's staggered by the competition that American students will face in the future, something I know that all of you are aware of, something that I am intensely aware of as the mother of four kids. But we cannot ignore what is happening in Asia because we're getting bogged down in the Middle East. And I think we can't ignore it because it is a reflection of our own society. The world works most effectively, I'm convinced, when America is strong. And at the moment, we are in a period where America is not strong because its politics are not strong. Because nothing is being decided in Washington, D.C., because there is no effective governance, the challenges that America faces at the moment are not being addressed. And we all benefit when America works better.